Guys, Massey BK here, and today I'm doing another reenactment video. As I can see, there is a freaking tank right behind me. It's a tank. Hello, everybody. How's it going here? And I saw a German oh, yeah, motorcycle right there. over there. And I'm with Arscope 90. My friend Ben's here, and my friend Nathan. And yeah, my friend Nathan, Nathan from the other one.
or the laws of physics did not deny, and if you fire this weapon as quickly as it is theoretically possible to shoot it, it would rapidly overheat, it would jam and malfunction, and that's a bad thing to happen on the battlefield. In addition, after every 20 or 30 rounds, you have to reload the weapon. So the, the sustainable rate of fire here is really something like 100 rounds per minute. And nonetheless, that's pretty comforting to a GI on the battlefield. And in the right circumstances, house to house, room to room fighting, fighting in uh, thick woods or jungle where ranges are going to be vast and compressed, 105 yards is perfectly adequate. So for those reasons, some guys like this, trusted it, and would manage to get a hold of one and keep it in operation. The weapon, of course, has a very unique and distinctive silhouette, and it has a very distinctive signature when it fires. We're going to demonstrate the concepts of the weapon right now. Okay, so we're going to this was a ubiquitous American weapon in World War II. We put it in aircraft, we put it on uh, ships, we put it in every armored vehicle, and of course we issued it to the infantry as well. This is what is known as a cruise serve weapon, which means that it takes more than one man to properly move and operate this piece. In this instance, we have a machine gun squad that consists of four men. That squad is led by a corporal or a sergeant who is the squad leader and also the gunner, raising his hand there. He has an assistant gunner who's raising his hand, and then he has two ammo bearers who are raising their hand. Each ammo bearer, as well as the gunner, carries one can of 250 rounds of length 30 6 ammunition. And notice I said 30 6 again. This weapon uses the same ammo as the M1 Garand and the BAR. They can all interchange rounds, which makes your supply picture much simpler. The riflemen uh, who carry the ammo have two jobs. One, of course, is to lug ammo for this weapon. The other is to protect the machine gun team with their own M1 Garand rifle fire. So <laughs> when the weapon is moving, the riflemen can cover it. If it jams or malfunctions, they can provide protection while the jam of malfunction is being cleared. The gunner carries not just one can of ammo, but a 14-pound tripod, while the assistant gunner carries the 24-pound machine gun. Now, that might sound backwards. The gunner carries the tripod and the ammo, and the assistant gunner carries the weapon. But this is actually very logical, because the most important decision the gunner is going to make is to place the weapon into position. He decides where this gun is going to fire from. And wherever he puts down that tripod is the spot that he selected. So he carries the tripod so he can quickly make that decision. Once he puts the tripod down, the assistant gunner places the gun into the tripod, moves off to the side to load the weapon. The gunner assumes his position behind the piece, and he is the one who will fire. This weapon has an effective range of 1,200 yards and a cycling rate of fire of 450 rounds a minute. Now again, cycling is theoretical. If you squeezed up on that trigger and dumped 250 rounds out of that can as fast as you could, it would quickly overheat the barrel and the weapon would malfunction. And on this Browning machine gun, it takes five minutes with a pair of asbestos gloves to change out the barrel. So you really want to avoid having to do that in combat. Therefore, a gunner was taught to fire in six to eight seconds of burst, <coughs> traversing the weapon left to right as he did so. In that fashion, he could put out a sustainable rate of fire of about 250 rounds per minute and cover a lot of ground. He could, for brief intervals, increase that rate of fire in the case of a true emergency. A good gunner knew how to put arching fire over the head of his advancing infantry so that his rounds plunged onto his opponent's position. And in the defensive capacity, he would put grazing fire in front of his position, which means the bullets are coming at about angle height in front of the ground that he is defending, which makes it a very effective defensive weapon. This weapon obviously has a very low silhouette. The disease can move around the battlefield, it's easy to dig in, and it's easy to camouflage. And this is the primary American machine gun in both World War II and Korea. And we're going to let you see it in operation.
Notice that red attack tack sound of American automatic weapons since 19... <laughs> Okay, guys, we're in there. It's about to start. It's going to pull and go off. It's going to surprise us. We're going to fall back. <laughs> guys, sit down. Nathan, you can like a new bump.